Welcome to Everyone's a Millionaire podcast, where we explore the world of wealth and finance and provide insights and inspiration to help you achieve your financial goals. Do you ever dream of becoming a millionaire but don't know where to start? Or perhaps you're already on your way to accumulating significant wealth but want to learn more about the strategies and habits of other successful millionaires. In this podcast, we'll bring you interviews with successful entrepreneurs, investors, and financial experts, as well as research-based insights and practical tips to help you build and grow your wealth. We'll cover topics such as how to invest in stocks, real estate, and other assets, how to manage debt and save for retirement, and how to build a mindset for financial success. Whether you're just starting out on your financial journey or you're a seasoned investor already looking for new insights and ideas, Everyone's a Millionaire is the podcast for you. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the fascinating world of wealth and finance. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Everyone's a Millionaire. Today I am joined by a friend, a fellow investor, a fellow entrepreneur. This guy just kicks ass all around. I really, really love this guy. I follow him on all of his social channels. He's got tons and tons of valuable content. So I'm just really, really blessed to have him on the show today, Mr. Michael Zuber. Michael, how the hell are you, man? Good to see I'm you. I'm doing really well, man. It's good, good to see you. Uh, I have a saying that I really mean every day is Saturday. So uh, yeah, I'm doing okay. doing okay. Awesome, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Every day is Saturday. I love that. You said that whenever we jumped on. And uh, man, I love that. That is amazing. Hmm. Michael, this show is all about spreading knowledge, value, wealth with the audience. It's cold, um, not cold. It is uncut, uncensored. We just jump in. It's raw. That's the word I was looking for. So we're going to just rock and roll here today, man. Tell us who you are and what you essentially did or are doing to create your wealth straight up. Yeah. So first and foremost, you always got to start with, you know, husband and father, uh, you know, those were job, you know, number one and, you know, one A and one B. Uh, but, but the story of, you know, Mike Zuber starts when I was 30 Ooh. and yeah, it really started when I was 30. I, I had grown up, you know, I'm a gen X grown up to go to school, get a good job, climb the corporate ladder. And that was what I was doing for my twenties. I was just hustling and trying to climb the corporate ladder and, you know, I had a I had some success in the stock market and then lost it all. And I realized that, that I needed a you know a better way. And you know, my goal at 30 was to get to four rentals and, and obviously it greatly exceeded that. But I'm just a full-time employee. I'm not an entrepreneur. You know, David, you're an entrepreneur. I'm not. I'm just a full-time employee who figured out how to build wealth, right? Create disposable income, become really good at something. And do it for 10 years. And if you follow that very simple formula, not only you'll be a millionaire, but you'll likely be a multimillionaire. And if you do that with cash flowing assets, uh, you know, you're gonna have the, you're, you're gonna be financially free. And um, you know, that's that's really the journey. So I was a, a you know, husband, father, full-time employee that earned financial freedom in roughly 15 years. You're so humble. <laughs> <laughs> you are so humble, but I love it. Now you're not a full-time employee anymore though. I mean, you were uh -huh. like, yeah, I get it. And I, and I love that you, that you, you know, express it that way, explain it that way. Um, what is your life? And this isn't even part of the podcast at this point. This is just me. What's you, what does your life look like now? I think you already kind of said it. Every day is a Saturday, right? Yeah. Every day is Saturday. Uh, so I retired February 2nd, 2018. Um, I got to tell you, David, when you retire financially free in a moment's notice, I had a really bad day and just left. Wow. And, you know, for a couple of days, you're doing pretty good. You're pretty, you're, you're on cloud nine, you're, you're high. But then as a type, a commission driven, my life is my work. Cause I'd always planned to work to 50. Why? Cause it was a round number and um, I didn't have anything. So I started to get depressed. It got so bad. You know, I almost got a job. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad it got, right? 
Uh, so, you know, long story short, I, uh, I decided to write a book, uh, that basically starts with reading rich dad, poor dad, and then what happened. And that became my mission. So now what I do is I've been creating content since February, I don't know, 28th or something. And I've just been helping people. Of 18. Right? So I, yeah. It was 2018. Yeah. Yeah. And your book um, is amazing, by the way, one rental at a time, folks. It's awesome. Go buy it. I've read it that. probably six times. I got the, you have the audio version too, right? I do. Yeah. I got I the, the audio version. version a couple months back. Awesome oh, book, you. man. Phenomenal book. It's, it's so, it's what I, my favorite thing about it is it's about your journey and it's not one of these like get rich quick books. It's like, guys, this is going to take some time, <laughs> yeah. if you, but if you are patiently persistent, you will you will achieve results and a lot of people are all like salesy like oh this is the get rich quick and you're not and i love that about you because yeah. most of that's bullshit right yep, whereas exactly. you're like it's not going to happen overnight one at a time yep. stick the course and if you do amazing book guys check it out one rental at a time yeah. it's awesome so now that's that's a big deal, man. I we, we live in a world where everybody wants nearly instant gratification, and where celebrities are famous folks on Instagram, as opposed to you know what? Why don't you believe in yourself? Why don't you do the work? Because it is so easy, David, today to be better than most people. You just oh, gotta really? try. You gotta you gotta you know. I I read something somewhere. If you do something for seventeen minutes a day for a hundred days, you're likely in the top five percent of whatever that thing is. Wow. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty crazy. That's all it takes, folks. That's, that's, that's all I was just going to say. That's it. That's all it takes, man. That's, that's crazy, insane. So. Isn't that mm -hmm. amazing? All right, Michael, this podcast is super quick, short, fun. We're already having fun. Just five questions, man. Let's rock and roll. Uh, we already did an intro. Thank you for being here again. I'm super grateful for you and your time and your book and your knowledge and your education and your YouTube channel and just everything, man. You're the best. Okay. Number one, what was your biggest financial mistake or setback? I like to start with this. All right. Cause we can oh, all yeah. learn a lot, especially from other millionaires. Right. Yep. Um, and then how did you recover from that? So my biggest uh, failure, um, it hurt. It hurt. Bad. It hurt so bad. So uh, I, I kind of teased it there in the open. So I have about seven grand saved and, you know, I'm old enough to be investing in the dot-com craziness, right? I knew, I knew when Facebook was private and Google was private and I successfully turned seven grand into almost $200,000 trading stocks, Good job. not investing, okay. trading. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I start that journey doing the work, reading financials, all of that. I win. Then I, then I do less work and I win more. Then I just start literally gambling and win more. And, <laughs> you know, it's like you're on a heater, right? But I didn't realize that the stock market was just, everybody was winning. It, I thought I I thought I had the magic touch and, and clearly I was wrong. And the market does what the market does and it takes arrogance and teaches you a lesson. So I lost 80% of that in a couple of weeks. So I went from 200 weeks. Yeah, down to 40 grand. It just all disappeared. And I... I carried that dude. I didn't touch the, I didn't touch stocks for 15 years wow. because I, I, you know, I went from thinking I was better than Warren Buffett to realizing I was a gambling addict, right? That's just all it was. And from there, how did I pick up the pieces? I went to a Borders bookstore depressed and found that purple book that a lot of people my age find the rich dad, poor dad. And it opened a whole new world that I knew nothing about. Dude, I was 30 years old. I have an MBA. I was an accountant. I have an econ degree. And this freaking rich dad, poor dad book opens another window. I mean, it's it's wild for me to say that. And it did. And it just, you know, I, I figured if, if Robert and Kim could buy a condo in Hawaii and Portland that, you know what, Olivia and I, we could, we could go buy four. And that's what we did. But that was, that was the plan. Let's go for buy four houses. Why four houses? Because I figured by the time I was 60, the houses would be paid off and I'd have a better retirement. I mean, that was, that was the whole goal. And I realized stocks were not my thing. So let's go try real estate. So that's how I fixed it. Man, that is amazing. What what a great, what a great lesson. You turned seven into 200 and then you lost 160 of it. Yeah. You wanted to have four. How many do you own now? Uh, I think we're, I think last count was 176. I think it is. Something like 176 that. rental properties. Holy mm -hmm. cow, man. I thought I was doing good, bro. Wow. That is amazing.
I have a similar um, thing to that. It wasn't with stocks, it was with crypto. Um, mm. I turned like 20 grand into 300 and then I lost 250 of it. <laughs> and I that hurts. Touched, that stings. <laughs> I, I haven't touched crypto since. It's just like, you know what? I'm going to do rentals. So we got about a hundred and we got about a hundred and 20 rentals. We're, we're, I'm up there with you, uh, nice. but not quite, not quite. Those as are good days. numbers. Those are good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Not too bad. All right. Number two. Can you share some specific strategies or tactics that you use or used to increase the income and savings rate? Yeah, I mean, the first thing we, because again, the, the getting wealthy formula is step one is creating discretionary income. And that you only, there's only three ways you can do that. You can whack expenses, you can grow revenue or do both. Those are the only three options. That's I agree, 100%. Pick, pick one. Yeah. I don't care which one, pick one. So what did, what did Olivia and I do? Uh, so first thing we did, because it's fastest, is we audit our expenses. We went through our expenses and we we categorized them needs versus wants. And we cut out all the wants for years, years. Uh, we went from spending 100% of take-home pay to spending about 50 to 60% of take-home pay. So bingo, bango, discretionary income's growing. Also, I happen to have a sales commission job, which is a highly levered career. So... I spent all my time trying to get better at that craft. And, you know, that my job was to find capital and, and find deals. So that's what I did. And, and then Olivia ran the portfolio, right? She had the hard job. She did all the work um, while I was trying to, you know, get more, get more money and, and find more deals. So um, that's, that's a big deal. It's, it is so simple. It's all about discretionary income. I don't care how much you make. I don't care how much you net after taxes. If I can go through your checkbook, and, or credit card or debit statement, or whatever you pay your bills. Let's look and you at have your nothing Amazon left purchase history, right? Yeah, let me. <laughs> let, I I can you know I know I know plenty of people who make five hundred grand a year, and they couldn't write a ten thousand dollar check to save their life. That's disgusting. It is. It's it's, it's terrible. I like how simple how 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 you simplify it so you know so just black and white guys. It's about how much you keep, right? You can make more money. You can, you know, you can stop spending, so save more of it. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's one or the other or both. And that's it. That's, that's, man, I love it. That's yeah. And those, those become the seeds. I mean, that's the, the getting wealth formula is that simple, but if you don't have the seeds, you can't plant. If you can't plant, you can't water. And if you don't water, nothing grows. It's, it's a very simple formula. It just takes 10 years to grow into anything. And the first yeah. five years suck. If you're making mistakes, you don't have any money, you feel like you're going slow, your friends are making fun of you. But trust me, when you do it for 10 years, amazing things happen. If you do amazing. it for 20 years, Man. just bonkers. Man, 80% of Warren Buffett's wealth happened to him in like the last 10, 12 years. 80% exactly. because of the compounding effect, right? Everyone's like, oh, you know, he's, well, people are going to have different opinions, of course, but he's been investing for 75 years, right? Time yeah. is definitely a big piece of that. I love it. All right, number three. Did you have any mentors or role models who influenced your approach to wealth building? I'm not asking who. We already kind of mentioned Rich Dad Poor Dad, which is everyone that's in this game's yeah. mentor. I'm not asking who so much, though. I'm asking yeah. how they influenced you. So let me ask a question again. Did you have any mentors or role models who influenced your approach to wealth building, and how did they influence you? Yeah, it's it's really weird. I think everybody influences you one way or the other. Sometimes it's negative. So I had a lot of negative influence, right? Uh, my childhood was one that was not a lot of fun. And it was always about money, right? When we had money, dad was happy. When we didn't have money, dad was not happy. And we didn't have money a lot. So dad was not happy a lot. And the other thing I learned is, is if you have money, spend it. That's as a money's child. meant to be yeah money's yeah. meant to be spent it's not to be saved i mean i was you know my whole 20s i mean i was trying to make more money and every time i got a check i spent it it's like it was crazy so a lot of my habits uh were the negative ones like the role models and and eventually you know ha having suffered that huge loss i realized no one's coming to save me so you know we got to figure this out so you know, that's did when you we have go the down epiphany? The I'm just curious here. Again, off topic for a second, but yeah. did you have the at what point? I know you did. This isn't even a question of if it's when. When did you have the epiphany 
that wealth isn't about having um, financial freedom, but it's more about time freedom. Um, hit me until uh, I remember I was in Europe on a business trip and we were buying homes during the crash and we always had to move money around because these things were trashed, right? We had to move money around. So I remember calling Olivia and um, asking her how much we had to move this month, expecting a, a decent number. And she goes, nope, we don't need anything. And I'm like, what happened? What, you know, what, why? And she's like, the, yeah. the cash the cash flow from all the other units we had at that point funded the model. And, and that was the first time it really, I really saw that this, you know, at that point, probably eight years, maybe nine years was paying off. I was, dude, I was, I, I am comfortable doing the work. I keep my head down. I am like that jock, that horse in, you know, the Kentucky Derby, I had blinders on, you know, I'm going that way. And it, it wasn't until Olivia kind of told me like, we're doing okay, honey. <laughs> that I figured that I figured uh, financial freedom was, was there and, and time freedom was, it was thereafter. Yeah. Man, I love it. It's amazing. Most people, they want financial freedom, but they don't. They really want time freedom. They don't know it. And if you ask I the agree. question, why and why and why and why, and you keep asking why, it usually boils down to, because I want to be able to do what I want when I want. And it mm -hmm. and it's not about money. Here's the caveat. It takes money. It takes financial freedom to be able to acquire time freedom. But the ultimate goal, folks, isn't financial freedom. It's time freedom. 99% yeah. of the time. So, well, that's man, that's funny. It. That's funny. This this is why I say every day is Saturday. Yeah. Because for twenty years, I would be traveling on Sundays. I had a I had a worldwide job, so I would I would be in Europe or Asia or whatever. And in order to get there for Monday meetings, you got to travel Sunday. Yeah. So when I say every day is Saturday, it's because for most of my adult life, I only had a Saturday. But now, now. every day is Saturday. Every day is Saturday. Man, I love it. All right, number four. How did you, how do you, or did you balance risk and reward when making your investment decisions on the path to becoming a millionaire? And again, that can be applied to today too. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance yeah. risk and reward when making investment decisions? I knew where we were in our seasons. Uh, so for the first 10 years of our seasons, we were in growth mode. Both my wife and I, we worked, we had W-2s, our, you know, our incomes would pay our bills. And then we take discretionary and buy assets. Uh, we did 1031 exchanges. We levered up. We did cash out refis. We were in growth mode. Uh, I, I would I would think our average LTV during our growth mode was pretty close to 80%. You know, so we were, we would, I would consider that highly leveraged. And we had debt on everything. We, yeah. we had nothing free and clear. As we get closer to financial freedom, Olivia bounces in 2015, I bounce in 2018, we look at our portfolio and realize we're not in growth mode anymore. And when you yeah. leave growth mode, uh, you rejigger debt, you lower LTVs, you have a couple of things scraped together that are free and clear just in case, because I, I started before the crash, right? So I, I, know, I know what happens, you know, or, you know, I know what happens when stuff goes to zero. So yeah. we have some stuff that, you know, it's, it's free and clear, you know, the, the, oh, the oh crap pile. Uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. so yeah, it's, it's it, for us, it was always about what, what season are we in? Are we growing or are we just managing? And yeah. for us, that meant significantly lowering LTV, no seconds, no equity lines, just, you know, straight 30 year debt on most, if not everything. And yeah, we're, we're in definitely in management mode. It doesn't mean we're not growing. I think oh, we, we buy, we 100%. buy one, two a year almost by accident. Sure. Um, but yeah, during growth mode, man, I was, we were, we were, we were moving. It's funny and, that you say uh, that because you're in, you're either in one or the other, you're in growth mode or you're in, you know, management mode. You can't really be in both. No, you um, can't. What a great answer. Talk about some serious strategy and strategery. I love that word. Um, guys, if you want strategy on real estate, Michael's YouTube channel is all about strategy. One rental at a time. It's what it's called, right? Same as the book. Correct. Check that out, guys. It's amazing. I'm a subscriber. Go subscribe. All about strategy. Amazing. Awesome answer. Okay. Last question. Uh, maybe one or two more behind this one, but this is the, the meat and the potatoes here. Number five, looking back, what advice, this is my favorite question. What advice would you give your younger self? Oh, yeah. About managing money and building wealth. 
Um, I think I already know it, but I'm curious, you know, to hear what yeah, you have to say. I, I would tell myself to house hack a fourplex in the Silicon Valley when I was 20 years old. I had, right. I had, I didn't I'd, see that coming. That's I had cool. a job. I had a job. I could have done it. Um, I was married at that. I was already married at that time. I should have house hacked a fourplex in the Silicon Valley. I should have got into real estate at 20, not 30. Um, I should have realized, I should have realized that doing the work works. I just, I just had it beat into my head, go to school, get a good job, make a lot of money, spend a lot of money. I thought you I were going to say quit spending my money on stupid shit. But you actually <laughs> said, <laughs> but you actually said start invest in it, which is yeah. similar, but it's yeah. different, altogether different. Yeah, I, so I, I didn't mean I, to interrupt I, you by any means. No, I, I think that's, I think that's, the, that's the key. Is, you know, when when's the best time to buy real estate? You know, ten years ago yep. or today, right? Today. You gotta, you gotta make sure cash flows don't put an appreciation any of that nonsense. But um, I should have bought a fourplex. I mean, my life would be, I mean, that one fourplex, I think I looked it up one time. I could have bought a fourplex in like 92, I don't know, for like 160 grand. They're worth like 3 million bucks today. It's crazy. Just crazy. So on average, and this is, you know, not exact by all means, on average, real estate doubles every 15 years in America. You know, at a conservative, yeah. you know, 3%, 4%, something like that, conservatively, right? Not not uh, every 15-year yeah. period are you going to see that. Yeah. But on average, you know, it's you're going to see that. And, you know, it's just... Yeah, I, I have a saying that I wish people understood. And it's this. Inflation is a feature, not a bug. Yeah. If you understand that, you will invest and let inflation be your friend. If yep. you don't, inflation will run you over. Man, nobody's I would rather you talking about this. You probably are, but like nobody else is talking about this. I again did not mean to interrupt you, Michael. I apologize. Um, okay. But inflation can be your friend. Yeah, inflation's going to happen whether you whether you like it or not. I'd rather use it than get used by it. So, amen. Yay me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, Michael. Again. Thank you so much for being here. I am so grateful to know you and call you a friend and learn from you. Um, you have a book, One Rental at a Time. You have a YouTube channel, One Rental at a Time. Um, what else can the listeners, the audience, the viewers, you know, where can they connect with you? Where would you want them to go if they are new and want to, you know, follow in your footsteps? Like, What's yeah. up? Uh, where, 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 where are you? <laughs> I, I've done a very few things right in life, but one of them is everything I do is one rental at a time. So Instagram, website, YouTube channel, books. Uh, I should be out there. I shouldn't be hard to find. Uh, but yeah, just uh, just do the work. I, I believe in you. Uh, it does take time. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you can do it. So there's there's not a lot of people that believe in folks these days. I believe in folks. I help people all the time now, and I get almost daily notes that it's working. So. Uh, Believe in yourself and do the work. Man, that's amazing. Michael, thank you for your time today. This has been an awesome episode. Tons of value. That's what it's all about. Um, I can't thank you enough. Any parting words for us? Do the work. Every do day can be Saturday for you as well. Man, I love it. All right, guys, sign it off. See you next time. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Everyone's a Millionaire. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion and that you've gained some valuable insights and ideas to help you build and grow your own wealth. We want to thank our guests for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us today. And we also want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in and joining us on this journey of financial discovery. If you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a rating and a review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us on our website or on social media. Remember, at Everyone's a Millionaire, we believe that wealth is within reach for everyone. And we're here to help you achieve your financial goals. So until next time, keep hustling, keep learning, and keep building your wealth. Signing off. Oh,